Hello and welcome to the um, OpenStack Manila project update. Um, we're starting a little late, but we'll try to move right along as best we can. Um, if you have an urgent question, feel free to raise your hand and stop us as we go along. Uh, we'll try to do a little Q&A at the end. I'm Tom Barron. I'm uh, PTL for the Manila project um, for the last uh, couple of releases. Um, and I'm Victoria Martinez de la Cruz, uh, contributor for Manila project for the last couple of two years, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so first, let's just quickly say what Manila is, because some people may not be familiar with what the problem space and background are, and then we'll talk about what we did in Rocky, and then what we're going to be doing in Stein and beyond. Um, Manila, as you know, probably is the control plane to provision and manage filed, uh, shared file systems across storage systems. So it's an abstraction layer, just the way that, say, Sender is an abstraction layer above block storage and has different block storage backends. Um, we do that for uh, file shares. Uh, it's forked off from Sender, but it actually solves a new class of problems. Um, I'll just make a note, uh, our, you know, all the OpenStack projects have uh, um, animals as logos, and this is the Zorilla which sounds like Manila, and I think that's the only connection. Um, if we didn't do um, animals, I probably would have done something, tried to get somebody to do something creative with file folders, because that's where the name came from, was for like Manila file folders, so shares. Um, so like uh, a bunch of other OpenStack projects, it offers a self-service uh, REST API. I mean, there's a client there that people use, or they use Horizon or whatever, but they interact with the REST API that's consistent across um, um, and simple to interact with. There are about 30 backends, um, multiple NAS protocols, NFS, CephFS native, GlusterFS, HDFS, SIFS, etc. Uh, in the Rocky release, we had about uh, almost 60 reviewers and uh, 50 contributors and 27 companies represented. This is the eighth release of Manila. Uh, the latest uh, user survey showed 184 deployments, so just people responding. We don't know how many people didn't respond. but. Uh, um, there's um, a bunch of activity outside the Manila uh, project proper, integrating it with other, other things. Um, in the Rocky release, um, Manila has an a API is microversioned. So we maintain compatibility backwards always. Um, so we had, I'm just showing that we had a few API changes here. We'll talk about the features that went on. Um, at the time, so if we change a feature and we need to extend the API or do something, we, we microversion it. And when you interact, you can, you can negotiate which, which version you're working with. Um, one of the features in Rocky were some uh, enhancements to the notion of share type. If you're familiar with the idea of a sender volume type, it's like that, or um, kind of like a, um, it's basically like a template for the kind of storage you want. I want SSD storage, or I want a particular backend storage, or whatever. You use extra specs to do it. So um, there's a default share type that's always needed. So if you create a share without uh, mentioning a share type, you get the default. Uh, and we didn't used to show people what was the default. You had to go look at a file, and the file was only available to administrators and so on. So it's just a usability enhancement. Um, and we can also filter uh, on the basis of these extra specs, which are the uh, keyword value properties that are in the share types, right? So you say, uh, um, this has to be SSD or whatever. Um, so we can filter by those now. Um, we have access rules in Manila that determine who can access shares. Um, so there was an enhancement that the Huawei folks pushed uh, that they had experience in the public cloud where people wanted to annotate the access rules. Um, so we now have that ability to, to do that that we didn't before. We have metadata on a lot of the other objects that we didn't have them there before. 
Um, the Inspur AS13000 folks added a back end. So we talked about 30 different drivers or so. We got another one in this release. Um, the, where other, you know, all, all the drivers basically end up saying, hey, we got some new bell and whistle or something we need to add. Um, so NetApps have a, a snapshot show up as a dot snapshot type directory, and sometimes you want them visible, sometimes don't, people don't want them visible. So they can control that now with the configuration option. They can also use a, uh, a share type that says uh, create it with visible or not visible, that type of thing. Um, they also, we have the idea of security services um, and um, with SIFS and NetApp you can set the OU now um, when you couldn't before. Uh, with the CephFS backends, uh, prior, the, there's a volume path in the file system um, that used to just be set and hard coded. And now we can configure it, and that means that we can run multiple CephFS backends. So you can have CephFS backend one and two and three and so on, using the same file system behind it. Um, Infinidod supports multiple export locations per share now. Export locations are basically what you would use to mount. It's like a, in the case of an NFS, it would be an IP address and the uh, path that you would mount to it. Uh, just to pick, but it, depending on the protocol, it could be different things. Uh, QNAP su supports the new, the new version of Q QNAP OS. Um, there were community goals for every project. Um, not every project always meets them, but they're asked to. Uh, we met ours in Rocky. So um, there's stuff like, um, Mutable configuration, some of the configuration can be marked as mutable. For instance, um, the configuration that says whether you're logging with debug or just info or something like that. So we mark that as mutable. Now we can basically do the equivalent of sending a SIG hub and getting that configuration to take. It used to be you would have to restart the service, which is potentially, um, it's not gonna disrupt anything on the data path that's in use, but it would disrupt the service in the sense that I can't create a new share or do extend a share or do the kind of control plane operations that Manila offers you know, during the reload. So um, it's a step in terms of non-disruptive operations. Um, testing was using a library um, that nobody wants to support anymore. <laughs> so that's cleaned up and gone. Um, we're doing on time. Oh, not too bad. Um, so in the Stein release, um, we bumped the number of the release. Um, we have new um, community goals. So uh, one of them is to run all gate, uh, run, run gate jobs under Python 3 by default. So as probably most of you know, um, upstream Python is dropping support for Python 2, I think, in the next year or two. Releases, uh, distributions, and so on are moving to Python 3. Um, we need to get OpenStack ready for that. So our upstream gate jobs, many of them were, uh, we, had, we had already, um, back in, I think, Mitaka, uh, converted all our unit tests and um, um, linter tests, PEP8 tests, and so on. So they were running, um, uh, ready for Python 3, and the code base was pretty good, but the functional tests and Tempest tests and so on were Tempest still... Tempest on the um, built-in server yeah. implementation that we actually got fixed uh, recently, event that had this dependency with event that was not compatible with Python 3, and we got the fix recently, so uh, that's another thing less that we had to cover, but right now it's only Tempest that we need to migrate, and that will be the end for our migration, but yes. And Victoria's leading that project, among other things, <laughs> among others. Um, so if you have questions about that, she's the person to talk to. Um, another community goal are upgrade checkers. Um, and the idea there is that all our projects will run Manila status upgrade um, check or whatever. And um, basically, 
say there are some config options that have changed and you need to change, you know, they're deprecated now or whatever, it would warn you of that before you attempt to do the upgrade. We, we by the way, always keep config options around one release even though they're deprecated so you don't, you know, get out on a limb and cut yourself off. You just get a message saying this is deprecated now, please change it and so on. But that, I'm just giving you an example. It's, a, it's in a general infrastructure that you could put in various plugins um, for checks that would be appropriate to your project. Um, the framework thing is committed now in our project. We have to think of between now and the end of the release about what checks we actually want to put in there. But we've technically met the goal at this point. Um, we have some carryover work from the Rocky cycle for um, JSON schema validation of um, REST queries. Um, we were just doing ad hoc validation in code. Um, this allows one to write a JSON schema for each research, uh, resource. Um, they will be, the schemas will um, be broken out against the microversions because, and then it will do that kind of validation. Um, this is an interesting example because we, we had um, a great <coughs> spec written for this and we great initial work and the contributors just disappeared. Uh, probably some kind of reorg at their company or something like that. Uh, this happens. Uh, but this is um, uh, work that we'd like to continue and nobody signed up for right now. So if anyone's interested in it, um, the, there's really a clear design, great spec. Uh, um, not rocket science, but, but valuable work if anybody really wanted to get involved in, in Manila and just we would we would love to have you and, and help you along with uh, the process. This would be a great, great thing to work on. Um, another carryover um, is access role pri prioritization. Manila um, has right now an ambiguity uh, with access rules um, in that um, you can have overlapping access rules and it's ambiguous which one will win. Um, to me, it's intuitive that the more specific rules should win. Uh, other people say, no, I want to be able to override the more specific rule with um, um, another one that comes first that should take priority over it uh, so that I can unmask it later. And there's use cases around that. So this is something people argued about and different backends did it in different ways. So we decided to allow users to put a priority on these. Uh, and they can um, decide for themselves. Uh, this work, uh, uh, there was good progress on it in Rocky, it's still continuing. Um, it has an owner, um, but I expect it will get done this cycle. Um, we have something called driver handle share servers that confuses people, but there's driver handle share servers that has to be either true or false. Some of the, but some of the drivers, um, present themselves uh, basically a virtual version of themselves to each OpenStack tenant, where an OpenStack tenant is a Keystone project or, you know. Um, and they can, um, in those cases, those drivers spin up a new virtual server, as it were, for each tenant. Those are driver handle share servers equal true uh, servers. They're more complicated. They're um, nice in terms of the OpenStack multi-tenancy model, uh, but there are features that were present with the simpler drivers, the DHS SQL Pulse drivers that weren't there for them. So we have specs open right now uh, for work to address those gaps. Um, the manage unmanage feature is uh, basically a way to import shares um, into Manila and OpenStack management. So say you had some shares already out there um, that were being used privately on a, on a back end for some purpose and you say, hey, we want to make those available to, to OpenStack people and we're going to bring them under OpenStack management. That's called managing the share. Uh, similarly, if you want to relinquish control, that's called unmanaging the share. Um, so there's an open spec for that that we expect to merge in the next two or three weeks, um, barring some 
fatal objections. Um, similarly, some of the backends can do replication of shares. Um, so, um, and they can do it when they run in the DHSS SQL false mode, but not in the true mode. Uh, so there's work to enable that. And basically, um, what it comes down to is the specs say we need to be able to um, run we, we have this abstract notion of a share network uh, in Manila, which is, uh, for practical purposes, is often a description of a neutron network and subnetwork uh, on which um, the VM that's going to mount the shares lives. Okay, um, I'll back up to, on that in a moment, but um, um, that, that's a classic case, at least, and that's what the share network would mean. Well, if you have replication, you have a segmented network, you need to be able to represent the fact that you've got, you've got one replica over here, one replica over there, uh, and tie them together. Um, so that's what this is about, is like multiple, multiple subnets and so on in the, um, in the notion of a share network that we don't have currently. Um, then we have uh, three open specs that we expect to merge uh, for work that probably would get done in the cycle or at least get started in this cycle. Um, and by the way, I, I don't get all hung up on does it get completed in this cycle. <laughs> we start stuff and we, we work on it and if it doesn't, then we carry it over to the next one. Um, that's, I know we're very waterfall six month cadence, but some things need to be done like that and other stuff just needs to get done. Um, as soon as it's ready. Um, so um, there's the idea that you can create a share from a snapshot. And currently that's limited um, to doing it on the same storage pool as the original. Now what if you have other storage pools or backends that are actually consistent with that snapshot so that you could conceptually created on the others, then you'd like to be able to make use of that storage. So there's a spec about that. It's tied up right now into arguments about what the policy ought to be for that. Do you assume um, local cal when it's fast and want to do those first and then optimize for speed and efficiency of space or do you want to spread it and how would you represent policy for operator decisions and so on. I expect that'll get worked out in the next couple of weeks but we'll see, it's an interesting one. Um, there's improvements in the idea of availability zones. Um, availability zones as you know are kind of just labels for places you put stuff but generally the intuitive idea is that we represent some kind of failure domain. Um, so there's specs to uh, improve the way that when you schedule shares or place shares, you take availability zones into account and, and use those. Um, and there's a spec to, uh, to expose different kinds of capabilities that we're currently not exposing to end users so that they can select the right kind of uh, shares. Um, so that's the work that we had specs for, um, but the overall theme from my perspective <laughs> as PTL is the, these are all great, um, but really where we want to improve Manila is to make it more easily consumable and more easily adopted. And that means not just by end users doing point and click on Horizon and so on, although that's a very important area and there are things you can do with the CLI right now that you can't do with Horizon, so that's one gap to make it more usable, so make it more usable for humans who are doing it, but also to make it more usable um, by programs, by platform as a service and so on. Now one thing I'll say about Manila, one way that it's very different than Sender Sender serves storage up through a hypervisor. That's essential to it, and you have to go out of your way to do tricky things to, for instance, make it work for bare metal with Ironic. Uh, we saw a lot of talk in some of the uh, uh, keynotes and so on about developing infrastructure that's not just for Nova, right? Well, Manila was never really just for Nova. It serves storage up over a network. 
It doesn't care if the consumer is a Nova VM, bare metal, container workload running on a VM, container workload running on bare metal. Manila doesn't know the difference. And that makes us very versatile and useful for a world of open infrastructure that can be with Nova or without Nova. Um, so we have some gaps, however. We're not, we're not in the OpenStack client currently. We're not in the OpenStack SDK currently. You have, you say, Manila, blah, 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 instead of OpenStack, and, and we're not in the SDK. We're trying to address both of those things in this cycle. Uh, OpenStack Ansible has started working to incorporate, uh, build some roles for us uh, in there. The Kubernetes right now is successfully using Manila with the dynamic external service provider. You'll see a t there's a talk from CERN where they're using that external service provider with a CSI driver on the node uh, for CephFS as a backend. We're looking at working with them and other people to extend that so that we have a, um, a CSI um, on the master as well uh, on the master as well as on the nodes to use Kubernetes terms for it um, and uh, or master and worker. I'm mixing my CSI and Kubernetes, but. Um, and um, these are areas that actually I think are going to be as important or more than adding new bells and whistles within Manila itself, because Manila is pretty mature, it works. Um, our work is in the Stein cycles being tracked on this wiki. Anybody can look at it. We have a forum later this week um, where we want operators to talk to us about what they need and help us calibrate whether what we're working on actually fits with real needs. But that shouldn't be limited to one little conversation at Summit. Um, this is out there. We encourage people to reach out to us and talk to us, whack us on the head with two by fours, say, why are you working on that? Nobody cares about that. Here's what we really need. Um, I, you know, there's so many things to build. We might as well build something that's useful. Um, you can find us, um, you know, you can use the OpenStack developers and operators mailing list, which are merging, by the way, but uh, <laughs> so I'll update that slide. Um, and um, you can find us on Freenode. Um, email me, email Victoria. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll get you in touch. Um, if you're interested in contributing to Manila, there are many ways, and there's an onboarding session here. The, um, on Wednesday, and um, that's kind of it. Um, I think we're running short on time. We did start late ourselves um, because of the, there's a cumulative effect here. But let, anybody have any burning questions or we'll also be available outside? Maybe we can step outside and let the next group start up, uh, try to get back on schedule here. And, Thank you.